Hello, I'm Designer Dave. Today we're going to be starting a new series, uh, Game Design Pro Tips. Uh, this is for game developers and game designers who want to improve their skills or who aren't sure about certain things. Um, and today's topic is going to be about game design documentation and the ways that you can use them to improve your ability to communicate design to other people. And most importantly, if you're a contractor or you're planning on freelancing as a game designer, what sort of things you need to create for the client so that they can understand what you've done and it's easy for them to implement. So let's get started. So today we will be talking about game design documentation, basics and pro tips. Um, this is something near and dear to my heart because it's what I've been doing effectively my whole career, so that's 22 years of that. Um, but most importantly, in the last 10 years, I've been doing it on a client basis, meaning that I have to provide documentation to clients and then they need to be able to implement what I have designed for them. And that is a pretty precarious and tricky situation, particularly if uh, they don't know what to expect. And the truth is that there's been a lot of uh, I'm not going to say bad game designers, but there's been a lot of people who are unable to communicate their game design in a way that um, clients can appreciate. So when it comes to game design documentation, um, you need to know who your target audience is. This is critical because how you describe your game design to a programmer is going to be very different from how you, des you describe this to an executive or a producer or another game designer. So you want to know who you're targeting with the design documentation. Secondly, um, what do they need to implement your design? Uh, this can be critical in terms of um, if you're giving it to a user interface designer, then obviously they're going to need some sort of mock-up. Um, if you're giving it to a programmer, they're going to need the data and the formulas behind your design. And lastly, how do I communicate these things clearly and efficiently? And that's the tricky part that most people stumble upon. Um, and so what I've laid out here is how I do design and this may work for you, it may not work for you. A lot of companies use Confluence these days, which would, uh, which doesn't go against what I'll be presenting here, but it's a different format. Uh, in the case of me, I'm primarily a freelancer and contractor, so sometimes I have to provide these documents and just hand them over. Um, so it can be a very different situation. But we'll go over the basics here, the four basics. There's game design descriptions. These are basic descriptions of your design the data behind that design, the mockups so that people understand how your design works, and then the presentation of your design, which is important for certain groups, um, but also for understanding across the board for the whole team. Let's start with game design descriptions. Your target audience for game design descriptions are other designers, programmers, and sometimes producers. Um, this can vary a little bit depending upon how that particular company that you're working with is structured. Sometimes the de main designer could also be the CEO. I've seen that before. <clears throat> Sometimes your target audience won't know anything about games at all. Um, but either way, the descriptions need to be informative uh, and they need to be able to explain your design. So the core component of this is making sure that everyone understands your design. And how do you do that? Simple word documents, just some pictures and concise language. The important thing here is that everyone understands exactly what you're going for. Um, and this will also be your clarifying document, meaning that if someone is looking at your mock-up or looking at your data and they have a question, the descriptions document should be able to answer it the majority of the time. Sometimes it won't be able to, but the majority of the time you want your descriptions document to be able to handle it. Game design data. So who's the target audience for this? Uh, typically it's other designers and primarily programmers. Programmers are the ones who want the, the data for each of your designs. So they're the ones who are going to be looking very closely at um, what the numbers are. Uh, they need the formulas, they need the numbers behind your design and this is where they're going to find that data. Um, how do you do that? Spreadsheets. It's almost always spreadsheets. In fact, I've never had it not be spreadsheets. So when you're dealing with data, large amounts of data, you're going to be doing it in probably Excel and more often than not now Google spreadsheets. Um, and 
really there's been no variation in that. So if you haven't already investing some time in learning Excel and learning spreadsheets and learning how to uh, create formulas and, and do data manipulation there is very important. It's not just for analytics, it's also for complicated designs. Game design mock-up. Uh, who's your target audience? Other designers, again, in fact, it's always other designers, um, UI artists, uh, regular artists and programmers. Uh, they wanna see what you have in mind for how this design is going to be implemented. Um, it, this is not necessarily, you don't have to be an artist to do this. Uh, it helps a lot. In fact, a lot of really good game designers also happen to be uh, 2D artists who are able to create mockups uh, quickly and in sketches and sometimes in meetings, which is also extremely useful. I'm not one of those. Um, so how do you do it? Well, if you are an artist, you can use Photoshop. Uh, I know basic Photoshop skills because just out of necessity over the years, I've had to. Um, but there are also really good mock-up tools. And I'm gonna show you one today. Uh, this is not a sponsored, but I'm gonna show you one today called Balsamic Mockups that I use very frequently um, because it has a dual purpose, which I'll get to in a moment. Game design presentation. Uh, the target audience for this is the entire team, producers, executives, and publishers. Um, Basically, anyone who doesn't necessarily have a good understanding of game design or game development in general. Um, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, um, but the assumption will be that they don't, in which case they need to understand your design in the simplest form possible. And the way that that's usually done is either a PowerPoint or a usable mockup. Um, and when I talked about Balsamic earlier, Usable mockups are things like PDF files uh, that can be tapped or clicked to have it switch between screens so that they can see all the different elements of the game design that you're presenting. And I'll give you an example of that using Balsamic uh, as well. Um, but the best part about PDFs, especially when working on mobile games, is that you can give someone the PDF file, they can download it to their phone, and then they can, it'll pop up like a full screen and they can tap on it and it feels like an app. And uh, executives and, and publishers and producers tend to go wild for that sort of thing because it gives them a very quick and easy way to understand your design. So let's go over the four types of documentation, uh, starting with the uh, description. So GeekWords is a mobile app, and I've been working on a new monetization uh, system for it. Uh, the first one was confusing and problematic. Uh, I was selling uh, season passes, which would provide, which would allow the player to purchase a season of a show. The problem was that each season of a show could vary between five to twenty-four episodes, which isn't really fair when you're selling um, puzzles that way. So the old currency is being uh, obsoleted um, and will allow exchanges to the new currency uh, via the old currency in a way that I think will be fair. Um, haven't really fully decided on that yet. Um, but uh, that's described here. This is the old currency. Then I have a description of the new currency. Show tickets are given once per day that the player logs into the game and can purchase one episode of one show at the player's discretion. They can also be purchased in packs, see Excel, or one can be earned by watching an ad. Um, and then each one is just a description of each, each thing that I've added. There's now hint tokens. This is how watching an ad works. This is uh, the ticket and token counters are on the top right. And then I put a picture of that. Here are the tokens, here are the tickets. And N, N, N is the typical designation for number. Uh, which I use frequently as shorthand in various documentation. Um, then there's the pop-up store, which when you tap on either of those, it brings this up and you can purchase hint tokens or episode tickets. Um, pay no heed to my current uh, numbers. Uh, those may change, though I actually think they're pretty on par with what's going on in mobile these days. And uh, they should be pretty fair. Uh, we'll do a monetization video later on and I'll ex I can explain all these things. Um, but either way, the next document would be the data. So let's bring that to the center. Um, and I can tell already that you probably won't be able to read these, so I'll make it as big as I can. Um, <clears throat> here you can see the numbers. Uh, I've put names on these things. I don't know how relevant these will be, but I sort of gave them each a 
title that we would use within the app store and when the player purchases them they'll see these titles um, this one is a simple show ticket you can purchase one for 99 cents you get one puzzle for 99 cents effectively so its real value is 99 cents uh, this is the basis for determining the real value of everything else that we're selling here if you buy a show bundle you get eight uh, puzzles that you can purchase the price for that is $2.99, thus you're getting five bonuses compared to if you purchased each one individually. The Big Show Bundle is 20, that's a fit bonus of 15. Epic Show Bundle, bonus of 50. Legendary Show Bundle, 20 bucks, 110 bonus tickets, you're getting 130 total puzzles. Word God Bundle, 800 puzzles. There's 1,033 puzzles in Geek Words that you can purchase, so this is like near the maximum amount. That one's $100. Expensive. Well, keep in mind that you also get uh, free tickets every day from watching advertising and thing like, things like that. Uh, hint tokens is a similar path. Uh, the number of hints you get for 99 cent purchase is two. Remember, you're still getting two free per day, so you got to really want these. <laughs> or you can purchase exorbitant amounts of hint tokens for varying prices, up to a thousand, which I think would cover most users for at least a year. So these sort of price options um we we title that it's it's for whales effectively if someone wants to dump a hundred dollars on your game you want to be able to allow them to do that if that's nothing to them uh there's no reason not to um, but for most people i think that the most popular one would be in the 4.99 to 9.99 range um, because this allows you to buy uh basically an entire season of almost any show this one for sure um, and probably like this would get you all of Game of Thrones, I believe. I believe there's 60 episodes, 8, 16, or 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Yeah, that would get you almost all of Game of Thrones. So that's that's ideally what you want. You want the player to sort of have, see what they have in mind, what they want to purchase, and then they could uh, make those purchases appropriately. And in this case, we're switching from a monetization system that was unfair in terms of a season pass purchasing <clears throat> all of a season of a show, which could be anywhere from eight to 24 puzzles, which, you know, it takes a lot more time to make 24 puzzles than it does to make eight. So it, it's more fair to me as the game designer. Um, all right. Last up, I want to show you balsamic mockups. Um, so this is my, the mockup tool that I favor. It's called uh, balsamic wireframes. Uh, I've recently repurchased it because the old one that I had purchased was obsolete and they were no longer supporting it. So that sucked. But either way, um, it's a very easy tool to use. It has a lot of functionality. You can paste images in here. They have text, words, iconography. Uh, well, that's my icon, but you can, let's say that you wanted to have a brightness adjustment icon. You could just grab it there make it varying sizes, extra large, XXL, or all the way down to extremely tiny. And they also have other really cool tools in here, such as um, mock-up iPhones automatically done. And you can switch this one between various versions. So you can see your mock-up, how it would look in, in different scales. Or if you're targeting a particular platform or scale, you could use this tool for that. Ultimately, um, you can see that uh, the only thing that I've changed here in the design for this, for the monetization, is that I've added the tokens up in the top right corner of the phone. And if you tap those, it will take you to this screen. But the really cool thing about Balsamic is that you can export these things to a PDF. So let's open that. And here you see the same thing. Whoa. Here you see the same thing, and you'll see that this is actually something you can interact with. So if I tap on these, it pops up the store icon. When I tap on this, it gets rid of it. And this is something that executives and people, clientele will go nuts for because you can put this PDF on their phone. It will fill the screen of their phone, and it looks and feels like they are interacting with an actual app when, in fact, they are not. Um, that's... Uh, well, I have other interactivity here that I haven't gotten to. In fact, I have to update my entire app in Balsamic uh, because we're revamping it for GeekWords 2.0, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, but that will be a future update, I suppose. 
Uh, I did not do an executive summary for the monetization because I believe that in the case of having a mock-up like this, that generally is the most helpful version. But uh, the executive summary here that I did was actually the presentation that I gave at the start um, where I went through all the different uh, presentations, uh, all the different design documents. So I hope this has been useful. Uh, if you are uh, liking what I've done here and you'd like to see more pro game design tips um, and learn more about how professionals in the game industry operate, let me know. Uh, liking and subscribing helps a lot. Spreading this video to people who would be most interested in that topic helps the most. Um, and uh, let me know what you think down in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed it and have a wonderful day.